I live in this constant fear. It's not always crippling, but it can be. It can be crippling. And no matter how much I try to tune it out, it's always there. Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name's Marie and I am sharing my journey with macular degeneration, myopic macular degeneration on this channel. Thank you for joining me. If you find any value to this content, please don't hesitate to give me a little thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to be notified of new content and share to anyone who might need to hear about this. All right. Because of my eye condition, I have blind spots in both my eyes. They're of different sizes, different shapes and in different place, places. And because of that, they affect how I see the world. I also get distortions around those blind spots. Some are bigger than others. And because the distortion is not the same in both eyes, that means where I get a huge distortion in one eye, I don't get it in the other. And when both eyes work together, that creates double vision. I haven't had many headaches, but I'm wondering if people with MMD and distortion suffer with headaches. Please let me know in the comments if you do. I also have, in the blind spots that I have, it's very difficult to describe what a, what a blind spot looks like. Most of the time you don't see it because your brain blanks it out and, and blends it in in the with the rest of what you're seeing but most of the time there is something happening within the blind spots it's usually some revolving lights or flashing lights it changes all the time and it's usually worse when i'm tired stressed it fluctuates with my menstrual cycle as well so that plays a part in how i see so because of all these visual defects in my eyes there are lots of things that bother me and therefore there are things that i struggle daily with bright lights any sort of bright light be it the sun or this two light that's currently in my face emphasizes um, mostly the blind spots and so they, they get more prominent i can see them flashing a bit more i'm more aware of distortions etc another source of bright lights are screens and I find screens very distracting, which is one of the reasons I had to cut back on work. I am by trade a translator, but after my eyesight deteriorated, I'm finding it a lot harder to spend hours and hours on, on a screen. One thing I found helpful actually with screens is to switch to dark mode my apps be it on my phone or on my computer are turned to dark mode and i find that actually quite helpful i know this doesn't necessarily work for everyone because i remember talking to a fellow patient who said the dark mode didn't help what works for you let me know in the comments please another thing that involves bright lights it's kind of strange is on overcast days which there are many of in the uk I'm finding it quite frustrating because when there's a, a cover of clouds, the light can be quite white and I find that overwhelming. Yet, if I wear my sunglasses, I find it too dark. So there's this sort of discrepancy. And also, I don't know if it's just me, but I, f <laughs> I feel so self-conscious wearing sunglasses when it's overcast. Maybe it's just me. I just, I just feel like I'm being judged for acting up or something like that. Sometimes I wish I could I could tell everyone, ah, it's because my eyes don't work properly. Don't judge me, please. Anyway, another thing that I struggle with is reading small print on paper. That that has got harder and harder as the years go by, to the point that I'm finding it hard to read physical books now. I'm a lot happier with an e-reader, I have to say, which is a shame because I love books. I love I love a physical book. With an e-reader, you can increase the font. I suppose I could use I could use um, a magnifier. I'm finding it a bit difficult to adjust with a magnifier. Uh, also, you know, you've got, I know there are magnifiers that you can actually clip onto your book. Maybe there's a knack to it, which I haven't quite got yet. But I'm I'm finding it more distracting because of my distortions. Sometimes I lose. I don't know which line I'm on anymore when I'm using a magnifier. 
So that's another reason why I'm moving away from, from paper when I read. Driving is something that has its challenges and to be honest with you, although I have been told that my my vision in my left eye is good enough for me to drive, I'm getting more and more scared to do so. I certainly don't drive at night time. I certainly don't drive on routes that I don't know. So that pretty much narrows it down to very few occurrences and I find that I I drive less and less. Another thing that you lose, you know, it's loss of independence, which is hard for sure. Walking in the dark is something else that I find difficult. It's a good thing these days that we have flashlights on our phones. That comes in really handy, I have to say. It has definitely impacted how I organise certain activities. For example, especially in winter, I certainly would shy away from having to go out after dark because of my vision impairment, even, even with the flashlight on my phone. Yeah, so it's another another thing that is affected by my condition. Faces. Oh, that that is probably one of the hardest things I think with my condition. It's getting harder and harder to recognize people in the distance. I'll tell you a little story. When my other son had his first Christmas show at school, we went there, and as we very often do, we left at the last minute, and we arrived. There was a massive queue of parents and we ended up having to sit at the very back of the school hall. We were quite far away from the stage and I just realised I couldn't make out my son. I was, I really didn't know where he was. I had a rough idea, but I ended up looking at the wrong child for the whole of the performance. That's an example of, of how difficult it is getting to see and recognise faces in the distance. I also struggle with faces from up close, not because I don't recognise them, but because of the distortions and blind spots I have, it basically distorts faces. If I pay attention to it, I sometimes see faces like Picasso portraits, which is annoying. I haven't got anything against Picasso, don't get me wrong, but in real life, I'd I'd rather see, you know, normal faces. So, yeah, because of distortions, it, um, noses, for example, look shorter and eyes closer. I mean, and I really have to train my brain. That's that's what it is. I, I train my brain to look at faces in chunks and stitch up a general look of the person I'm talking to. It's easier with people I know. And I find that with people I... I am less familiar with. It's hard and affects my recognition of these people when I later meet them again. Yeah, it's uh, that's a difficult one. And with that comes something else I struggle with. I struggle daily with the fear of not seeing my children's faces when they're older. And that hurts. Just to think that I might not see their adult faces, it's... I can't quite describe it. I know it's quite common amongst patients who suffer from this condition, or any, any sight-impairing condition. I know you'll know what I mean if you suffer from one. Yeah. And lastly, I have a fear, a daily, sometimes more than daily, fear of noticing a, a new change in my vision. What I mean by this is noticing that a blind spot has expanded, even worse if it's towards central vision. I live in this constant fear. It's not always crippling, but it can be. It can be crippling. And no matter how much I try to tune it out, it's always there. Sometimes I even have to consciously not try to check my blind spots. So that's something I used to do a lot when my vision started to get worse. After I was diagnosed, I used to check constantly, sometimes several times an hour, you know, closing one eye, closing the other. What can I see? What can I not see? It was extremely anxiety inducing. 
So I've learned to not be as intense. But whenever there is an episode of vision change, which inevitably happens at some point, I find that I start checking a lot more and it's it's nerve wracking. So I think that wraps it up for what I struggle with, with my condition. Are these your struggles if you are a patient with MMD? Is there anything else that you struggle with? Let me know in the comments. I hope to see you in the next video. And in the meantime, it's bye from me.